Well, hello friends, welcome back to the show. Uh, today we're going to take a look at uh, this thing here that came up in a PR um, where uh, Anpep is working on some taskbar improvements and he had all these ideas that he wanted to do and then he mentioned this one thing that I thought sounded really interesting uh, allow applications to display progress on the taskbar buttons. So um, here's, I guess, a screenshot from Windows. Now, I'm not super familiar with seeing this in Windows, but I do like the idea a lot. So I actually uh, said that I think it, it is very cool and I asked if uh, I can steal the concept for a video. And it seems like people are okay with this. So that's what we'll be doing today. Um, so what we want to do is we want to have per window progress and then we want to display that on the taskbar entry. And um, there are all kinds of things that could, could indicate progress, right? But I think we'll start with just um, adding a Windows Server API for this. So we'll go in the um, Windows Server IPC definition and just add some way here. Like it's, it's sort of like the title of a window, right? It's like set window progress. Um, and I'm thinking we'll just have a number between zero and 100. Um, and then, yeah, and then, then we'll, we'll display that in some nice way. And maybe we'll make that message asynchronous actually, because it doesn't really, doesn't really require a response. And um, I think maybe we can just start with only that. And then, um, we're also going to need to broadcast this information to uh, window management clients like the taskbar so that he can update um, his uh, visual representation of the window in the taskbar. So that goes in window client IPC and that will be a window management uh, window state changed message. So we'll just add yet another flag here, call it progress. And I think um, maybe the easiest thing would be to have like any negative progress would just mean um, no progress uh, and any progress between 0 and 100 means um, means that we should display progress so that's that's a start and then um, wait that was the wrong window um, then we want to set this somehow. So I was thinking we could have, like we'll, we'll want to do this in the browser, like when you're downloading something, we want to show download progress. But I was thinking we could also do it as an escape sequence in the terminal, because then any uh, program that's running in the terminal would be able to, um, you know, not only change the window title, but also change the window progress. And then something like our JavaScript test runner could show like how many, uh, what's the progress, like how many tests are remaining, stuff like that. If you download a file in the terminal, we could show download progress in the terminal uh, window. So uh, we definitely would like to do that. So anyway, <laughs> let's just, uh, let's just see. So to test this out, we'll need to go on the taskbar um taskbar window yeah here's where we go and in the taskbar window we'll get a um window state changed event and actually we have to go and change that event a little bit so that it has the new thing um, that would be into progress so here comes a little unglamorous um boilerplate And progress. So this will be, we'll have to instantiate one of these events when we get the message from the Windows server. So that'll be here. And then all we need to do is just include the new progress field from the message. Okay. Um, and then we can react to it here. So in the taskbar's representation for this window, we'll just say set progress changed event progress and then um, set progress so this is the taskbar's idea of what that window looks like 
Um, so we'll store progress of each window in the taskbar, and we'll say minus one by default, maybe. Okay, and then um, in Windows Server, the window object there, we'll also need to store progress. So that will be yet another field. And then we will have in progress, return and progress, set progress. Um, oh, this should probably be out of line, actually, so that we can um, send out a notification if it changes. So, window set progress. Um, if m progress is equal to progress, then just return without doing anything. Otherwise, set m progress to progress and notify. How do we do a state change notification? We have notify minimization state changed. Oh, I forget how this works. Um, we need to tell um, WM listeners window state change for this window. So how do we do that? I guess window manager normally does that. So maybe that's what we should do in um, set progress. And we'll do window manager um, notify um, progress changed. This okay and um, window manager. Yeah, so it already has all these different notify functions that get called whenever something changes about a window. So this will just be another notify progress changed for a window. And then here we'll just do uh, window manager notify progress changed. Um, and I think we can just send out a tell WM listener uh, window state changed and then he'll broadcast a window state change to every program who's listening for um, window management messages so this should do the whole trick I think um, as far as window uh, window server is concerned oh and of course actually we have to um, we still have to implement the set window progress thingy in Windows server so that goes in the Windows server client connection class. Um, we're going to have to put that virtual void. This guy right here, so window progress. So I think we can just put that near the bottom here. Client connection. So that's our message. And then um, we need to find our window. So wait, how do we do that again? I guess it's just a matter of saying auto IT uh, is M Windows find message window ID. Right. If IT is M Windows and did misbehave. Um, bad window ID. Yeah, that was a misbehavior, dude. Otherwise, we will. Just say um, it value set uh, progress message dot progress. Okay, so now everything should be done in the Windows Server side. Um, then how do we how do we test this? I guess we want to create some kind of message. I guess we can do this um, in, we can start with a simple test somewhere. So how about in the about application, we just um, set the window progress somehow. Or, oh, wait, we have to do this in about dialog. 
Okay, let's use the Hello World app instead. Because then we have a window accessible to us here, so we can just say um, Windows set prior progress. We're going to need an API for this in libgui, I see. So I'll say 50% progress. And then GUI window. Void set progress. Um, int. And let's, uh, let's not add a query API for this right now. So this will just forward to Windows Server. Um, so here we'll say uh, window set progress um, so if we don't have a window ID that means that actually let's assert that we have a window ID and then we don't have to care about implementing uh, setting the progress before we're connected to the window server um, and then um, Windows server connection done send or no post message messages, Windows Server, set window progress, um, my window ID, and progress. So now this API will send the progress to the Windows Server. Um, so that's good. And then, yeah, the Hello World app will set his progress of the window to 50. Um, and then let's just represent that somehow in the taskbars, in taskbar buttons. So currently they are just basic buttons, um, but maybe we'll want to paint them differently, I guess, because this is not quite going to cut it. Um, it's going to need a custom paint. Uh, um, Yeah, I'm thinking like, can we reuse some part of the regular button? Which I guess we can. But a button with progress is not like very typical. I'm thinking, should we add this, this progress mechanism to regular buttons or to make a specialized button just for this purpose? Um, well, it, right now it's easier to just add it to button, but I, mm, it feels weird to add progress to buttons. So I, I don't like it for that reason because it makes the API kind of convoluted. So let's avoid doing that. Um, so instead, what we'll do is can we hijack the paint somehow? What would be a good way? So the way button paint works right now is we call style painter paint button. So this will just paint the button in the um, in the right state. And then this stuff here is responsible for drawing um, any icon that the button has uh, and the text on the thing. So I guess. Um, one option would be, basically we want to paint some somewhere in between uh, that we painted the base of the button and putting the text and everything. Although we want to do the text differently. Mm. Okay, okay, okay. Let's, let's do this manually, our own way, in the taskbar button. So we will um, paint event. Okay, so now taskbar button paints itself, and taskbar button paint event. Okay, so we'll be starting with, of course, the regular. Um, we we'll just copy the code from GUI button, and we'll start from that. Flip GUI pair. There's that, could be a painter. And this one is called icon. So I think, um, it actually, in the taskbar, we always have icons. 
So we could do something like assert icon. So that's, that's one thing that gets a little bit nicer here, that we can just assume that we have an icon always. We don't have to check it. So icon location becomes uh, a bit easier to compute. Because we don't, we shouldn't allow things in the taskbar that doesn't have icons. Um, palette. All right. Don't need to check that. Don't need to check this. Yes, we have an icon. Okay, and then, oh, and we also need um, lib graphics font. And maybe style painter. So, okay, just a little bit of uh, finessing here. Let's see. Icon, no, 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 what's wrong with that? Oh shit, wait, why am I, why do I keep calling this? I made it into a reference already. Okay, uh, there we go. I don't know why I thought I had to call it. Okay, so I guess what we could do now is we could just uh, paint the um, progress on top here just to make sure that we actually have it. So, wait, let's paint text. Okay, we're gonna wanna do this manually as well. So we'll copy this out. Um, what is the rect? It's the text rect. And text alignment is the text alignment like this. Oopsie doopsie. Okay. Draw text. Text rect. And then we'll do string format. Um, P equals <laughs> progress. Um, window, wait, can't we get to the window? No, no, taskbar button must represent something. We have a window identifier. Okay, so that's what we have to work with. Can we look anything up with that in the window list maybe? Is a window list, then Ensure window for uh, identifier, and then we'll say window progress. Yes, like that. And then we'll put the um, text in the center, and we will use red for the color. Okay. So if I put all the parts together correctly, then we should be able to open the Hello World app and it should have the progress equals 50 in the taskbar entry um, in red. Windows state changed. So I forgot to update the code that sends out the state change to include the window progress. That's only in one place though. So we've been uh, good boys here and um, localized this into a single location instead of having its, these notifications everywhere. Because I remember they used to be everywhere. It used to be sending out these, uh, oh, the windows, they changed. And now it's in a single place, which is much more manageable. It would be interesting to add some more 
programs that listen for window management um, information. I had some some different ideas about breaking up the Windows Server into multiple applications, like um, trying to do, do less in each one. But at the same time, it works pretty well the way it is right now, so it's not super urgent to do anything about it. Okay, so we have, <laughs> it's a bit hard to read down there, but it says P equals minus one. And this guy, it, Okay, it said minus one at first, but then I put my cursor over it, and now it says 50. So, um, that was not the, not the best way of testing that, but it worked. So, let's see. So, after we've set the progress here, we need to update, we need to repaint that button, I think. Although, we could do that here. Do we have window list CPP? Yes, we do. Okay, so let's move progress. Um, well, we have the button right here. Okay, hold on. Let's do it this way. So if the progress changes, if it's a no-op, then do nothing. Otherwise, button update. So then we'll repaint the button when the progress changes in the taskbar. Great. And taskbar button Let's do something more interesting here. So, I guess after we've painted the base, so then we can check if, oh, we'll need the window way earlier than I thought, of course. So, let's see, we'll, we'll grab the window right away up front here. Okay, so if um, window, progress. Um, I guess we can do something like this. Then, then we'll paint it. So we'll do graphics, style painter. <laughs> what happens if we just paint a progress bar straight up? Um, let's test this, but it's going to look weird, but let's try it. Um, palette, minimum, oh. And the text, I guess we, oh wait, the text, that's interesting. The text should be whatever text we want to put in the thing. So that would be this, that's the text of the button. And then we shouldn't paint the text later on. Yeah, so then we'll have to stop the text stuff later on. Maybe that's okay. What is this stuff? This is just about um, more about the text. Okay. So the work is first you paint the base of the button, then you paint the um, progress bar if needed, and then you do the icon. And the progress bar includes the text. So immediately here, we can see that <laughs> we needed that text rendering. Um, if we didn't draw a progress bar. So let's see how that works. So uh, maybe we can, maybe we can, 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 can. We can call draw text or um, paint text. Right. And okay, yeah, we can do that. We didn't need to copy paste that stuff. So paint. If we don't paint progress bar, or has progress, we'll call this state has progress, and then we'll say has if has progress, then paint 
a progress bar, otherwise just paint text. Okay, so this one does not have progress, right? So eternal hello world, and he has progress. So that it immediately looks kind of interesting. Um, we're gonna we're gonna need some tweaks here. Because um, it needs to know about various things. Like you notice how the text becomes bold when it's active and stuff like that. And also when it's active, uh, it sort of moves down a little bit to the right um, to give it that depressed look. You can see the icon moving here, but the text does not move, so we need to fix that. And then we also need to fix um, the progress it shouldn't take up so much of the space. It shouldn't overdraw or draw over the button edge. So I guess one way we could do that is by just shrinking the rect that we draw into by four pixels in from all edges. So we, or um, two pixels from each edge, which makes it four, four. Okay, so there we go. Now it looks a bit more like a button. Um, I wonder if it would, if it would look more natural if we didn't do white in the unfilled part. Um, I'm thinking we're gonna we're gonna yoink this stuff out of here and make our own little special paint progress bar. Um, that doesn't use style painter, I think, because because this is gonna have to be specialized anyway. But let's see. Min max value, right? So please hold while I add namespaces. Okay. So how does this work? First, we fill the entire widget with the gradient, uh, and then, uh, I guess what we would like to do is to clip instead of, because inst what we do is first we fill it with the whole gradient, and then uh, we draw the text to, we draw the text twice. Um, first we get kind of a shadow, and then we draw the text again uh, with white on top, uh, and then after that, then we um, fill the hole on the right-hand side. But I think we're not going to do the hole, but instead we'll just clip the initial gradient fill. Um, so let's see, let's get rid of the... Let's get rid of the white here. Click. Um, and actually, we can still do that, but... This will have a temporary clip here while we do this. So painter, add clip rect. Um, and the clip rect will be the rect. Oh, no, 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 wait. The clip rect has to be the progress rect. So what is that? This is the progress width. Okay, so the graphics rect progress rect is from 0x zero to uh, from 0x, zero 0y zero to um, progress width and rect height. Yeah, and then we'll fill that. No, 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 we'll fill the whole rack, but we'll clip to the progress rack. All right, all right. Um, paint uh, custom. Hey, let's let's uh, give it some alternate name here just so we can tell that they're different.
Uh, okay, so it looks a little off. I think. Um, why is it like that? Let's see. Custom progress, paint or wreck shrunken. Okay. Oh, right, because zero, 00 is not necessarily um, the right offset. We have to do rect x, rect y. And we have to whole rect is same thing here, uh, rect y. Or no, wait, I didn't have to do that because it just doesn't move by. here so we can wait where did you go oh. here we are Let's see what it looks like down there it looks kind of proper ish I mean the, um, the double stuff here with the shadow that's clearly no good so we need to get rid of that, but the general look otherwise is pretty okay. Yeah, okay, so let's see about that shadow. Where's that coming from? Oh, it's because we never draw over it, so we need to clip. Um, we, need to, we need to do this while the clip is still active, so okay. Okay, yeah, that, that, that looks um, significantly better, so check it out. Right, although... No, yeah, I guess that's okay. So, of course, this is, uh, this is kind of just a temporary state, what we're seeing here, because um, the idea is that this thing will keep, uh, keep growing, right, and then it finishes somehow, but this is... It is looking kind of interesting. I like it. So let's make sure that the text moves as appropriate and that it becomes bold as appropriate. So which font should we be using here? Um, I guess whatever font we have. So we should pass that into paint custom progress bar. We'll just give it a font. And then we'll tell him to use it. Mm, that was not the right place to pass the font. Is it here? Great. also need to, I guess actually we could compute the text rect way sooner. Content rect. Wait, what am I even looking at here? Content rect. We're changing the content rect later. This is a bit weird. This is organized in a strange way. If the text is empty, then we just return. But we're never supposed to have empty text here anyway. Although, I guess, I suppose it could happen. If we have some window with no text, no name, no title. Um, okay, so 
we know that we want the content, the text rec to be the same. Uh, so we'll pass the text rec to this guy. Um, 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 um. So that's the whole rect, and we'll also pass the um, text rect. So he will know to use that text rect. I don't know why this one is translated. That doesn't make any sense. Extract and text rect we compute. Where do we do this? I guess if we just move this a bit later, then we can do it here. up a little bit, or actually this moves down a little bit. <sighs> I keep thinking I'm working on browser. So now we're becoming bold, but we are not um, We're not offsetting the thing correctly. Why is that? Oh, wait, it's this stuff right here. Mm. Oh, interesting. So we've been doing the um, the way that we move it, like one pixel to the right and one pixel down when it's being pressed, it's just a painter translation, but that's not quite good enough for the progress bar because that would also move the progress indication. So I think here what we're gonna do is we're gonna do text rect translate. Um, so we'll just move the text rect for this and we can also move the eye composition. So it's not translate, but move by, and icon location move by on one. So if we do that, then we don't need to translate the pan. And everything is the way it should be. Interesting. Okay, so this code is slightly um, hideous, honestly, but let's see, we don't need these comments here for this hackery, but what are we doing here? I'm just trying to move things to where they are used make this a little bit more understandable. Okay, so I think we can live with this the way that it is. Um, and move on to the more interesting part of adding some escape sequence for this. So in terminal, we have, um, <clears throat> so the way that we set the window title is by using this uh, X term or, or um, op operating system code um, escape sequence. And we also use that for hyperlinks. So I was thinking we could just uh, add it like one above the hyperlink code. Um, maybe there's a better way to add custom escape sequences. I'm just going to do it this way. And then uh, if this is the, a bad way to do it, or if I'm colliding with something, we can just figure that out later and change it. Like, 
it's it's not like set in stone in any way just because we're choosing the number nine right so um so what do we want to do with this well i'm thinking we'll just call a terminal client function set window progress and we'll send the second param um so we already have set window title so we'll just add another kind of callback here set window progress and that'll be an int I guess we can say numeric params instead. Um, set window title. We just have to have to make sure we implement that over here as well, because now um, the kernel actually uses the same terminal emulation library as the GUI terminal, thanks to some really nice work by Sergey. So because of that, we have to hook up this back here in the kernel as well even though this is meaningless in the kernel um, but in the terminal widget it is not meaningless so here what we'll do um, so terminal widget uh, overrides the set window progress and what we'll do is say uh, window set progress progress okay so what can we do with this we should be able now to um, to just print something out that that uh, causes this to happen so I'm just thinking, what can we actually use to generate random output like that? Um, we don't, we don't really have a good program for producing escape sequences. It's kind of weird, actually, that we don't have that. Um, maybe we can do it with JavaScript. Can we do this with JavaScript, I wonder? Uh, console.log. So we can do this, right? JS, EJS. Right. So can we do an escape sequence here, I wonder? It didn't quite work, did it? Yeah, nothing comes out. All right, well, that sucks. Um, okay. Do I have a compiler? I don't have a compiler right now. All right, all right, all right. We'll just have to put this somewhere. We'll, uh, we'll use a test program. Like, uh, we'll say cat gains the ability to um, to do this. So we're just going to test this out. So let's see, how does this go? It's, um, wait, no, that's not how you start the sequence at all. Um, dang it. I totally forgot how these work. <laughs> Let's go in ls and see how we do it there. 033, yeah, this is how it's done. So it's nine now. And then we just need to put something here, essentially. This is numeric parameter one, so that would be i. And then we'll flush it. And we'll sleep, or maybe we'll use sleep a little bit. Maybe not quite so much. And look at that. We have progress down there. That looks kind of cool.
And then when it reaches a hundred, I guess it reaches um, 99 in this case, then what we should do is we should also turn off the progress so that you would do by just sending like either minus one or like 101. Can we do minus one? Does that work? We'll test it. We'll see how minus one works. I don't think I've ever used um, negative numbers in a sequence like that, but maybe that'll work. That does work. Awesome. So let's see. So what do we do to make this to make this really kick ass is I wanted to try it with the um, with the JavaScript tests that we have because it's not that they take forever to run but ah, dang it I don't have bash I've been erasing all my ports too much let me just build bash um, our test runner is currently written in bash so you need to have the bash port installed to run the JS test it's definitely something that we're gonna fix it's just um, temporary Temporary usage of bash while we bring up our own scripting language, I guess. I don't know if we should, we should make a test runner in C++ or we could make one, we could make one in JavaScript, but it feels kind of, um, it feels a bit weird to write it in JavaScript because then if you break JavaScript, you won't even be able to run the tests. Although I suppose that is an indication that you broke something, but <laughs> you probably want to run the tests to be able to narrow down what the problem is. Um, so yeah, I think I think what we want to do is build our own um, POSIX like shell. Anyway, let's go and check this out. So in JS tests, when we run them, and it runs like this. And wouldn't it be cool if it would show the progress down here at the same time as it progresses through the tests? I think that would be cool. So base home none JS. So wait, no, not JS. JS tests. Oh wait, these come from these come from a different directory. libjs tests, right? So we have run tests, and could we? Could we? Could we? Could we? Do we know how many tests we're gonna do? I guess we don't exactly know. Although we could compute it. Um, so how do we compute that without, because we can't really call out to too many programs because we, we don't have so many programs. So I guess we can do something like this. Uh, test count. Okay, so that's how we learned the test count. We just iterate over the glob once, and then um, we echo like that. Can we echo an escape sequence here, I wonder? Is echo a bash built-in? I guess it is. So we can do um, echo dash e oh, 33 uh, 9 and then um, progress. Oh, wait, I can't just write progress. Progress. Um, This makes me wish that the progress would be, I didn't have to compute the percentage, but I could just say like, um, like I could say my count and my uh, test count. 
and it would compute the progress for me. I guess we could do that. If we could give like a min, or if we assume min is zero, and we just give you the count and the, the max count. Okay, yeah, I think we can, we can try it that way. So let's tweak the API a little bit. So numeric params and numeric params. Okay, so set window progress is um, value int max. Okay. And max and in the kernel, we straight up don't care. And then here we'll actually compute it. So up line 21 oh it says do I should say done <laughs> I don't write a lot of um, shell scripts and look at that it's filling out the progress how cool is that and then when it reaches the end it's like full so I guess we should um, remove it at the end, so we'll do the minus one thing. <laughs> okay, that's just really cool. then you can even minimize it and you still see how it's going. Um, this text, I feel like it's, it's sort of rendered in a weird way. Um, Terminal, oh, no, taskbar button. Why is the text centered like that? Paint custom progress bar, right, because we're not respecting the text alignment. GFX text alignment. We should listen to what you say about the text alignment. Because the progress bar, we always wanted it centered, so that made sense. But here, um, we want to provide our own uh, text alignment. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah. It is a bit weird that the um, dot 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 goes away. We need to fix that. We need to have text delusion turned on. Um, 
So this needs to have tech, JFX text division right. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. Just making sure everything's right here. Don't mind me, just running my JavaScript tests. Cool. Wait, this doesn't look right. Why is it like that? Oh wait, am I shitting out the name of the... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm probably just shitting out the name of the test at the end. Yep, 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 yep. I didn't want to do that. Okay, so that's hecka cool. If we run them on host, then... Mm, maybe this was actually used for something. Um, what's the one that we could use that's probably not used then? Uh, how about 413? Oh wait, no, that was the last one. What about 999? Let's just try it, a big number. Oh, that was too big. Mm. Kind of wishing that you wouldn't care about this. Why do you care about this? There's some way I can make you not care about this. What if I use a different Terminator? Um, if I do that separately. Okay. Let's go back to the old Terminator. Okay, so maybe I didn't need the 999. Maybe 9 was fine. I don't know exactly why that helped, but let's see if it still works here. Yes, it still does work here. Okay. Fantastic. That is just so nifty. Uh, I just want to look at it all day long. <laughs> oh, look, if I move the mouse, it gets a little busy. Hmm. Maybe we should make our own test runner. I mean, it's, it's nice to have it in a script, but it would be cool to have it in a separate program as well. We could do, we could do even more things. Anyways, this is awesome. So I guess we should do some commits here. So we can, hello world still, still works as expected. Cat, cat no longer works. Why does cat no longer work? Oh, because I changed the format. Right, right, right. So you have to say uh, the value and the max. So the max here is 100. That's really sweet. So let's see, get add. Mm, I guess we can do the Windows Server stuff first. So services, Windows Server. We'll also have to add the lip. Or do we need to add anything? Yeah. I guess technically we don't. So we can say Windows Server add. Um, or, you know what, let's, or, <laughs> Windows, 
add a um, per window progress. Each window now has an associated progress uh, integer that can be updated via the set window progress IPC call. Um, this can be used by clients to indicate um, progress of an ongoing um, task that takes ongoing task that or an ongoing task. Yeah, well, ongoing tasks. Um, the number. Uh, any number in the range 0 through 100 indicate uh, progress percentage. Any other number indicates no progress. for this. Actually, let's add that to the previous one. And we'll say a little GUI. Then we'll add the taskbar. Taskbar. Um, draw or um, Show window progress as a progress bar um, behind title, behind middle title. Yeah. If a window in the task bar has um, progress, has a progress number. <laughs> has progress, we'll now um, draw that progress in the form of a progress bar behind the window title on the taskbar button for the window. Okay, and then we'll add the libvt support. the uh, window progress terminals window progress or request an update of terminals window progress by um, sending um, an escape sending this escape sequence uh, escape this and then the number nine and here is the um, value, uh, max, max value. Uh, and then we had another escape and then a backslash. This, um, this can be used this uh, will, I'm sure we can find any interesting uses for this. Yes, I think we can. So we'll be starting with run tests, of course. The JS um, show run tests progress in the Taskbar. 
use um, progress, window progress escape sequence to okay. how far along in the test collection we are while tests. Okay, that's neat. And then what else can we do with this? So I, I mean, the browser is kind of an obvious one. Uh, we also, have, oh, we have that. Um, we have the Pro Tool, which is like um, a downloader tool. So you use it like this, like twitter.com. And then if you could see, it was actually showing some progress there. Can we get one that shows a little more? Send it to dev null. Wait, where's that output going? Oh, maybe we can't load it like that. Google.com, dev null. Oh, but we don't know how big the thing's gonna be. I guess if we don't know, then we can't really show you, but um, what about Apple? Okay, so in that case, we had something to go on. Um, what's a big resource online? <laughs> I don't really know a uh, big page. I guess we can find some, some big image somewhere. Um, there's a big image right here. Uh, no. Yeah, we could we can make this utility do the thing. That would be cool. So pro CPP, we already show the progress name. So if we have something to show, we can even include it right here. Um, so here's this, here's that, and there's that. And then it's the downloaded size and the maybe total size dot value. Let's try it. Oops. Oh shit, I should have redirected that somewhere. <laughs> That's nifty. Um, we should definitely clear it at the end. So we'll just do a clear. And this program could use a little bit of um, fixing up, like checking if it's running on a TTY and stuff like that. We should get generally better about checking if we're on a TTY. Um, so we'll send that to dev null and... Oh, wait, that's not the Serenity website. Did you see it? Oof, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Very like. So um, let's commit that too. Pro show uh, download progress in the window. Uh, show download progress in the terminal window if possible, if available. Okay, so. I think, I think I'm pretty happy with that feature for now. Um, maybe we should do the, actually let's, let's do the, the browser download thing. That would be silly not to. So we have our download widget um, in the browser. 
which opens in its own window, so he can just talk directly to his window. So in the browser, we have uh, download on progress, it progress. So here, if we have a total size, then we can compute um, I feel like maybe maybe the um, maybe the the Windows server should deal with the percentage calculation. I don't know, but like in percent is uh, float of downloaded size divided by float total size times a hundred. Um, alpha. Um, window set progress percent. So what can we download that would be large and in charge? Um, can we go and get a kernel from the kernel uh, boys over on kernel.org maybe? I wonder if that will load. <laughs> we'll see. Um, oh man, the parser is so noisy. Um, oh, okay. Well, it loaded a little bit. Although, I feel like all of the things I would want to download are kind of out of reach. Let's go and get another operating system then. Let's go get the Temple OS. Um, wait, why did that not work? Oh, okay. I don't know what that was. Can we just get the ISO here? Download. And look at that. That's pretty cool. So you see the progress here, here. And if you do this, you know, I'm just minding my own business, doing a little bit of JavaScript tests. <laughs> Man, that's freaking awesome. That is freaking awesome. In the case of this one, I feel like we shouldn't um, we shouldn't clear it after it finishes, obviously, because this one is fully downloaded. So I think we can keep it like that. Oh man, I love it, love it, love it, love it. Um, browser show um, download progress in the window task taskbar yeah that's so cool no it's not gonna open because it's not it's not um utf8 but maybe we can open it in a hex editor What's going on here? Well, I think I think that probably worked. That's really neat. There, there's one thing left that I don't like. It's that while we're running the tests, um, I feel like this looks off like it looks like there's a pixel a row of pixels at the bottom that should be filled in with progress but it's not cuz this this way it looks good but if it's selected it doesn't look quite right let me get a screenshot of that see if i can pinpoint it's irritating me about it um let's just open that up
Yeah, right. This bottom row here should have progress in it. Because when it's, um, we're just shrinking the rect, which looks fine um, in case we're up, but if we're down, then because of the way we draw the 3D border, we're missing a row of pixels. So let's just fix that. Um, 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 um. That would be in the taskbar button. Um, so this is our progress rect, which we shrank somewhere before passing it in. So here we give it shrunken for four. I think if it's pressed, we, if it's pressed, then we don't want to shrink it quite as much. Mm, just did rect. But if is being being pressed or is checked, then the adjusted rect set height. Okay, we're doing a little, little pixel hack here. Just adjusting it by one pixel. Because I think that'll be enough to get the effect that we want. Um, Now it looks right. Yeah. And if you open something next to it. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's pretty. <laughs> I like it. Um, get commit. Task bar. Uh, fix thingy, and then let's just rebase that into. Let's just put that into the. Ah, uh, damn it! It's here. Visit the Temple OS uh, website again, and I uh, use their ISO to test out the feature, and it is just beautiful, just absolutely great. I love it. All right, <laughs> so I think this is going to be it for today's video. If you made it this far, then I thank you for watching and for hanging out. And I hope you saw something interesting. I'm a very big fan of, of this little feature. Um, I, think, I think we can make good use of it and we can probably polish it up with some additional behaviors and things, but the basic idea is really, really neat. So yeah, we'll keep, keep iterating on it and see what else we can use it for. Thanks for hanging out and I'll see you next time. Bye.